In what has become one of the more popular ongoing series on the channel, in today's video we will place all monuments in EU4 in Amsterdam, the home of the Dutch, 50% sea, 50% weed. The bonuses are nuts and they stack to some outrageous levels. Whether the AI is capable of running with these bonuses and performing well in the game, well, we're gonna have to watch that and find out. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that as well. This video is sponsored by the wonderful people who have clicked the join button below the video and become one of the homies. Not only do they support the channel, but they also get early access to all of these videos and exclusive roles and chats in the Discord. So check it out and consider joining if you haven't already. My question of the day for you guys is of the new government mechanics that were added in 1.35 with the Domination DLC, which one is your favorite? I appreciate new interesting balance of power sort of mechanics like the decadence with the Ottomans, but I also really appreciate cool things like what you form Russia, you actually get a new bar that you can modernize the nation. Things like that are really cool to me. I'm curious what you guys think, so let us know in the comments below. Now, of course, I probably would have shown you most of this stuff in the intro, but uh, just taking a quick look here, it's pretty interesting how many things we have packed into one province. Look at that. 72% war score cost just to take Amsterdam from great projects, adding roughly 1,300 extra points to the base cost. So, yeah, if anybody wants to take it, it is going to hurt them a lot. And you can see here that Amsterdam produces 45 and a half of the 190 cloth produced in the world. With the implications of that making that the uh, coast of Holland here, the English Channel, is by far the richest trade node in the world. Every year, this province adds 293.24 ducats to the English Channel, which is massive. Hey, stop! Why? Why? Now, of course, these guys do start as a subject of Burgundy. Everybody knows that. But uh, let's hope that they don't stay a subject for too long. Uh, could you imagine if they got integrated? That'd be a, a lame way to end the video. They do have a mostly generic mission tree. A couple of branches here. They think that were introduced in 1.30 with Emperor, I want to say. But uh, we'll see. I think the Dutch actually do get an extra mission branch or two. I'm not actually sure, to be honest with you. Regardless, after all this time, I'm sure you guys know exactly how we do this. We turn it on up to speed five and we unpause. Very early on, you can see the Dutch are building a huge navy. They're going to have three heavy ships for a three province nation. They have 19 light ships combined with five cogs. So uh, yeah, the Dutch navy is going to be formidable and it's not even 1450 yet. Safe to say that the economy is rolling here with 55% tax income efficiency and 62% uh, trade efficiency, they are doing pretty good. They also receive an extra 69 <laughs> from vassals, but they don't have any of those because they are a vassal themselves. Take a look at this spread. They have almost the perfect nice amount of total income. Total expenses 3.37. So safe to say they are uh, making good use of the money that they're making. And of course, early on, I think the major thing that's going to kind of determine where they're at is going to be the status of Burgundy. For example, they are rivaled to France and England and Austria. So it's only a matter of time before Burgundy gets dogpiled on by a few of the major nations. And remember, these guys all got buffed in domination. Austria didn't, but France and England did. And uh, Burgundy losing a war may mean that Holland feels ready to declare independence. So, you know, we're gonna have to wait and see but uh, I don't imagine they're going to stay subjected to them, especially considering the fact that they're going to be developing their lands. They're going to get very strong very quickly. And I imagine they may even uh, eclipse Burgundy. Yeah, four years in, up to five heavies and 20 light ships. Oh, the Dutch Navy is going to be crazy. And the Burgundian ruler just died. And we now have Charles here, 15 years old, no heir, of course. Uh, and Holland is actually feeling pretty good. They have 59% of the relative strength of their overlord. So they're feeling already up to 31% liberty desire. And if it goes over 50, that's when they can get people to support them. So we'll see how things go. And on the HRE front, we had, uh, was a Franz Joseph or whatever his name is, died over here in Austria. And we have a regency for young Ladislaus Posthumus here at age 11. So HRE might be a little bit unsteady, but uh, they're probably gonna pass at least the first reform here. So we'll see how things go for the HRE. A strong HRE may be something that kind of keeps Holland down, but it's hard to say. If they form the Netherlands, generally they will leave the HRE. So it's hard to say. I really don't know what's going to happen with that. So here's something interesting. Uh, not all of them are actually in Amsterdam, and that is because the hog is stealing some of them. You can see that uh, they are moving some of the monuments that they can. You got a good old Maui here in uh, the hog instead of Amsterdam. So I guess I probably should have made it so they can't move them, but it's a little funnier that way. So I'm okay with it. 
And just a bit down to the southwest here, France is having a game. They actually annexed all of the lands from England that was on the mainland, including Calais, and they actually just full annexed Provence in what I assume was an excommunication war or something like that. But yeah, Provence is gone, full annexed by France. So France is uh, looking a little scary, and it's only a matter of time before they start setting their sights on the rich lowlands over here in Burgundy. Also, the dev cost is literally four mana per dev at 19 dev. So Amsterdam is going to get pretty high development in a short amount of time. I'm very sure of that. They're gonna use basically all of their excess mana on it. And right now they are working through administrative ideas, which will give them core creation cost and extra tech cost discounts. So they're gonna have tons of excess admin mana to spend on base tax. And you guys all know how overpowered the tax meta is. 191 mana to buy that idea. That's uh, pretty good. That, that's gonna be definitely made up for in the core creation cost itself. I mean, even being 11 years ahead of time on tech, they could still take tech for just over a thousand. That's actually less than double base cost. So they're going to be ahead of time on tech the entire game. I would be very surprised if they weren't. Also, I'm curious, do you guys think that uh, these monuments add enough prestige? I think that maybe there's a little room for improvement there, but uh, they're doing pretty good. The development is skyrocketing in real time. 30 development in Amsterdam for 30, we don't want 32 actually. So it's gonna keep going up. And uh, meanwhile, that is raising their force limit, and it's also raising their naval force limit, eight heavy ships, and a force limit of nine, which is pretty solid for three provinces. Oh yeah, and by the way, their overlord is getting declared on by France. Not technically, they declared war on Brittany, who is allied to Burgundy, but either way, Burgundy losing an army is going to be really important for their liberty desire, because as soon as they peace out, they're going to be looking to pick up some friends if they're disloyal. Now, Burgundy pieced out, they actually are disloyal. They're over the 50% threshold, but it's only until Burgundy builds up an army, which I imagine is going to happen pretty quickly, or maybe not, it's hard to say. But uh, yeah, if they can stay over that 50% mark, they will almost immediately find people that are going to back their independence. Generally, it's gonna be their rivals. So it could be Castile, could be England or France. I think France can't because they have a truce with the overlord, but uh, yeah, it's gonna happen. I'm taking a look around because nobody has supported their independence yet, despite being very disloyal. And then I look and I see, oh, right, these guys can't join because they're at war. And uh, Castile can't join because they're at war with the Papal Neapolitan Excommunication War. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. Who's the Pope at war with over here? And oh my gosh, the Ottomans have taken a huge chunk of Naples and it's only 1466. And Albania has full annex Serbia and half of Bosnia. So uh, things are being weird and I have nothing to do with this. This is just base vanilla EU4. Well, aside from, you know, the monuments being taken all and put in one province. But this, this is not me. I have nothing to do with this. And a little over 20 years in, it looks like Ming is uh, going to collapse already. The Empire of China is completely dead. They have a ton of devastation, which is making things pretty rough for them. And uh, they're not going to come back from this because the devastation is only going to go up with all the occupations from these rebels. And here it goes. We actually did have Austria lose the emperorship. I don't know how. Uh, looks like Ladislaus died very young or something. I actually don't know how that worked. Either way, Burgundy did their usual once per campaign attack on Liege to integrate them, attacking into the empire, of course. So we got the Platinate, the emperor, get to calling in everybody else. So we'll see how they're doing. They only have 19,000 troops, which is almost less than Holland has. So Holland is already disloyal, and I don't think it's going to get loyal, uh, meaning they're not going to help in this war meaning uh, these numbers are actually even worse than they look. The classic full annex of the Pope from Castile giving Rome to Naples of all nations. So yeah, that's bad. Castile has got the PU of uh, Naples as well as Aragon. And Navarra managed to escape this time. But uh, yeah, I'm curious how this Ottoman Italy is going to have an effect on the dynamic over here. Also, it looks like Albania is getting eaten up by the Ottomans. So rip Albania. Yep, and sure enough, it looks like Castile has guaranteed or supporting the independence of Holland, meaning they are guaranteed to be very disloyal, 180% of the strength of Burgundy. So we'll see if they declare that war sooner or later. As far as I know, the only thing that could mess this up would be the Burgundian inheritance. And uh, I don't know, it's still a little early to happen, though I think it can happen basically anytime. So, uh, you know, time will tell. Also, how about this Brandenburg over here right next to a massive Danzig? looking good, but Brandenburg took a ton of land over here, pushing all the way over into Lundberg. So they're doing pretty good also. Turns out that the Dutch polders are a real thing. Holland down here with the most development in the entire world. You can see it all the way from space. We have Amsterdam with 53 development. 
the hog with 43 and even little zealand here with another 43 so uh yeah quite a bit of development in just this one state and the supporters are piling on england has joined the fray as well as berg of all people four province nation over here in the hre so yeah there is no chance that the 257 percent strength uh holland is going to fall to burgundy i actually think an overlord will release you if you have enough uh like overwhelming force against them but i'm not sure if the ai will do that and for some reason the navy is actually downsized quite a bit they only have one heavy and two in production oh wait a minute no that is the english the dutch actually have 12 heavy ships uh and they are by far the largest navy in the world they also have 67 thousand manpower in the hole with 21,000 ducats in the treasury so uh economically and militarily it doesn't look like they're going to be struggling for their second idea group they went with quality and they're actually making really good progress towards finishing that out already giving them naval leader fire so safe to say their navy is going to be absolutely second to none they also get naval maintenance as well as a lot of naval force limit modifiers. Yeah, the economic front is actually just wild. There is 57 ducats in the English Channel, and of that, they're collecting 71, which is more than is even in there because of their trade efficiency. But uh, to put that into perspective, 57 ducats in the English Channel, there's 10 over here in Lubeck, there is 13 in Genoa, and there is only 18 in Venice, which I think is the number two trade node in the world. So safe to say the English Channel is going to rule uh, global trade and all that stuff will obviously spawn over here. And that is going to fund the inevitable Dutch war machine. I heard the noise. Uh, there was no war declared. It looks like Burgundy just let them go. They immediately rivaled England, who was supporting their independence, which is hilarious. And they are allied to Castile, who is massive and has a large chunk of Italy as well as Aragon under their uh, boot. So yeah i think they're off to a good start here they also built a fort and moved their capital over to amsterdam makes sense and of course they moved all of the great projects that were in the hog back Sorry, over to amsterdam their new capital so yeah that. that's funny but <laughs> the ai gonna ai i guess and now that they're independent they've got a lot of claims and uh i assume they're gonna start pushing them now i said the brandenburg was doing well and that was before they got uh, coalition by hesse and now they are gonna get full occupied and dismantled so, you know, all good things must come to an end. They are calling in their ally of Poland, I believe, in this war. So uh, there's more to it than just the coalition, but they're probably going to lose. Meanwhile, our boyos over here are certainly pushing their claims at war with a few nations over here and uh, inevitably going to be taking over some clay. Now, it says that the Burgundian inheritance happened. They inherited their subjects. They're not a subject of anybody, at least not that I can see. They're at war with France at the moment, uh, and you can see over here in the HRE, the Burgundian inheritance, the low countries have been demanded, so I don't really know what's going to happen with that, but while we're waiting to find out, give me some feedback, guys. Let me know if you like these deep dives into one specific nation with all of the monuments and stuff. I was thinking maybe Copenhagen would be a fun one to try out because it would give them that naval dominance, and then it would allow them to basically expand outside of just, you know, the north. But uh, I'm curious, you know, I want to make sure I'm making videos you guys want to see. So if you have something in mind, let me know. And as I'm saying it, they declare war on their previous overlord here, going for the conquest of Breda here. So uh, probably going to take a few provinces. They have claims on all that. So we'll see what they do, though. AE may be limiting. We'll see. And so Holland took these three provinces they had claims on. And then France just annexed Burgundy, just full annex them so i assume that had something to do with the inheritance uh i don't know what the implications are of that it looks like france and holland are uh, going to clash inevitably but uh, they do have castile slash spain on their side so i don't think it would be in france's best interest so that's going to add an interesting bit of dynamic to it also castile's working their way up the italian peninsula you can see that they just annexed a large chunk of ferrara and they have all of tuscany so they're doing pretty good and now it appears that it is time for East Frisia to join the Dutch fray. This might be hard to hear for Chio, one of Dahomey's. He's actually top dog in Dahomey's. The way he became the top dog is he clicked the join button below the video and he joined the channel members. Not only does he get early access to every video that comes out on this channel, but he also gets exclusive Discord roles, giving him a cool color in the Discord as well as access to exclusive chats that I tend to be more active in. So if you want to help me buy diapers for my daughter as well as get a little something something in return, become one of the homies and click the join button below the video. And after letting a little bit of time pass by, France has united, Great Britain has united, Holland has not united quite yet, 
but uh, they are indeed the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. They are passing reforms, which is not something that I expected, though. I guess with a diplomatic reputation like what they have, what, what do they have? Let's take a look here. Nine. Nine diplo reps. So, yeah, they are the emperor of the HRE. The uh, Pope man loves them, and they are getting lots of Pope mana. And they have 95,000 troops with 142,000 in reserve. They actually have an army that is competitive with France. So uh, safe to say they're probably going to because they have a bit of imperial ban that they could be forcing, but they're not. So we'll see how that goes. Also, of course, the Reformation is underway. We have Protestants over here in the East, Anglicans up in Great Britain. We also have a Protestant center of Reformation over here in uh, Ossetania or whatever this region is called. Calvinism has spawned over here in Switzerland, as well as a portion over here in Nuremberg. I don't think there is a third center. No, I lied. There is a center in Hungary. And aside from that, it is a very messy Reformation. So yeah. Super, super messy. Probably not going to be very strong if I had to guess, though them being all spread out can be a good thing. So time will tell. For the third idea, they went with exploration. So we will be seeing some Dutch colonies. And while we're talking about colonies, you can see Castile in Newfoundland, as well as Great Britain and France. New Portugal over here on the East Coast. Portugal has decided to put some of their efforts over here into the West African coast, as well as some of the islands down here. Nobody to the Cape just yet. But here we go. The inaugural colony for Holland in Bani over here in uh, whatever this island is called in the Caribbean. Needless to say, the Netherlands has it locked down on the diplomatic front, allied to Sweden, who they helped break free from Denmark, Muscovy, Spain, who is massive and very powerful, and a bunch of people in the HRE. Now, I'm just itching to see if they want to go to war with France. They've got the forces. They can definitely call in their allies. I don't know why they're not doing it. We'll check in in a little bit and see how things come out. And a few years later, clearly the Dutch have made their way into France as expected. They are remaining the HRE emperor, though. They are not getting any more reforms passed at this point. They have formed the Netherlands. I don't think they had done that in the last time we looked. And they are now invading Great Britain. And that is because they are going for the second Dutch-British unification war, pushing for a personal union on Great Britain. Great Britain, who might I add, is 750 development of pure fifth great power. Uh, making them the third plus fifth, clearly going to put them very competitive up with the top one and two. And the reason why Russia is so high up there is because Russia has a personal union over Poland, and even better yet, Lithuania has a Rurikovich on their throne. So uh, yeah, Russia is having a very solid game. The Ottomans are still doing very well in the fourth spot, but Austria, who is in next Hungary, is in the sixth spot with Portugal and France rounding out the top eight, though clearly France is not going to do well. They are colonizing a bit uh, over here in South America specifically, but the Netherlands is going to take over all of their development and France is going to just crumble. The HRE continues to be ravaged by the Reformation. Uh, that's the number one reason why they are not gaining any imperial authority. Though I will say it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be, considering the fact that there are 31 heretic princes in the empire. As for ideas after exploration, they decided to go with espionage, which in my opinion is probably one of the most slept on idea groups, especially with these crazy updates in 1.35, allowing the transfer subject peace treaty at half cost from any time in the entire game and the ability to claim entire states in the same idea group. Like this idea right here is crazy. Plus 20 aggressive expansion, like it, you just can't beat it. It's so good. Regardless, I want to point out that we have a Gotland over here who has got land in Jutland and is actually his capital is in North Jutland with a couple of provinces here. This, this fort has been occupied for a while and it's probably going to break free to the Danish separatists because they can't occupy it back. But uh, yeah, their capital is on mainland Europe despite gotland being in their possession i don't know i don't get it and since we haven't looked out east at all we have jibe and jonzu uh absolutely just like getting as wide as they possibly can korea is looking good and japan is looking good and how about that Wu? i think in like the last video Wu ended up uniting most of china and it looks like they are the favorite to do that again of course since the collapse of the ming Yu is actually the emperor of china in the south with like five or six provinces right here uh, not going to hold on to that mandate for long, if at all. Bengal is looking pretty good, but we have Gujarat and Vijay still competing for power in the Indian subcontinent. We have this ugly colored farce over here. I don't know why it's pink. Why don't they just make it yellow? Yellow farce was clearly the best. With the Ottomans pushing into Persia and the Mamluks a little bit. But I have to say, I noticed something. We have an exploration Mamluks and they have some colonies in South Africa. So how absolutely wonderful would it be to see the Mamluks colonizing Australia like the good old Drew Dernal days? I would love to see it. 
The New World is still very much a mess with Portugal, Great Britain, and Spain down here with France up in here. The Dutch West Indies are coming along smoothly and Portugal is making their way up through Mexico, Louisiana, and the East Coast. And uh, obviously up in here, you're seeing a bit of a mess with the natives as well as Newfoundland and then Spanish Canada. We have this Zuni Federation, this tribe here that has like 50 random provinces just spread out across the entire continent. And like, how is that a thing? They have 16,000 troops. It's like, I'd rather just delete them. I'm going to delete them moving forward. I, I'm not going to do it anymore. And on the development front, you can see the Netherlands is not holding up at all. This province right here is 57 development. Their capital over here, 65 with 30 base manpower. That is absolutely insane. And I forgot that Amsterdam changes its trade good to paper. So uh, yeah, they are making good, good money here. 160 ducats in the English channel, which is um, it's pretty wild. Why? Yes, it is 1.35. How could you tell? Interestingly enough, the Ottomans did not collapse this time. They actually continued to dominate, pushing all the way down past Ethiopia into India, even having a couple of provinces in the Gujarat node and uh, doing pretty good overall. Didn't really collapse as far as I can tell. And, uh, you know, I think that they collapse basically every game. So that's a win for them. On the colonial front, you have Spanish La Plata, Brazil, Portuguese Peru with French Colombia and British Brazil over here because Britain ended up getting integrated into the Dutch Empire. We do have the Dutch West Indies, not to be confused with the Dutch East Indies. We got Dutch Indonesia, Dutch Malacas, Dutch Malacas, and Dutch Indonesia. Bro, what are you talking about, man? All uh, sound pretty good to me. Spain ended up being the nation to colonize Australia and New Zealand. And Delhi was pushed entirely out of Delhi into like Jaunpur slash Nepal and all the way past Burma even uh, down into Southeast Asia. But Gujarat is the major Indian nation this time around. And I feel like they never are. It's almost exclusively always Bamanis or maybe VJ and uh, or uh, possibly like Bengal. But Gujarat, the small little trading nation over here on the other side of India is uh, the dominant Indian nation this time. But back to the colonial game, we have a Mexico that broke free and a Dutch Mexico that is a colony. And there is some weird looking borders going on over here, but we do have a Portuguese United States that is uh, manifesting destiny quite well, I'd say. They are marching their way westward. Of course, we have Newfoundland, the famous Dutch colony, Spanish Canada holding on to all of the coast. And of course we have Saginaw, Michigan, the Mexican stronghold. Another Schubert vid, another opportunity for Denmark to get exiled to Greenland with their capital in this Vestigbin or whatever. I'm pretty sure this happened in the last video or the one before that. So that's pretty funny that they're being at least somewhat consistent in that. We have Orange Iceland. We have the Orange Isle of Ireland. We've got Orange Berlin even. And orange Paris. In fact, a lot of it is orange. I'm quite impressed, but uh, can you really be too surprised considering the uh, absolute copious amounts of bonuses they got from those monuments. Though I will say I'm very happy to see man coming out on top over here, quite literally on top, on top of the British Isles here, uh, all the way from Sutherland down to the Isle of Man themselves. So pretty good on them, considering the fact that they are a one province miner if they even get released in the first place. So shout out man, all my homies love man. We do have an independent Oldenburg, very nice, but they are surrounded by Hanover, who is indeed the emperor of the HRE. They are surrounded on all sides by Russian Scandinavia, Russian North Germany, and uh, uh, Austria that is very long, cutting France in half, the best form of Italy, Spanish Italy. And the debate is now settled. Crimea is split in half, half Turkish, half Crimean, independent Crimea. Why didn't we ever think of this before? This is the answer to all of our problems. And Poland ended up making a comeback. I don't really know how, to be honest with you. They were uh, a PU of Russia and they got annexed. And I assume the same thing happened to Lithuania because they're just gone. But uh, Poland exists. They do not have a uh, Jagellon or however that is pronounced. They have a uh, Sapiha. So, yeah, independent Poland. And the religious map in Europe is just about as horrible as you could imagine. There is a lot of Protestant lands up here in the north and as well as over in the Poland area. But uh, the rest is Reformed and Catholic. That is right. The Dutch stayed Catholic. John Calvin has no power here. And uh, yeah, it's all very Catholic. Of course, the Ruth spread the Orthodox Catholic Christian faith over across the Urals all the way into northern China, bordering up on uh, even some Japanese lands and Confucian lands. And as is tradition, the Buddhists have stricken back and pushed north into China as well, introducing Zen and whatever those interesting weird beliefs that I don't know that much about up here into the Chinese region. 
And interestingly enough, the Dutch actually converted a lot of the Spice Islands and even like the Philippines and all that over to Catholic, which uh, I think is new because I'm pretty sure they used to just not do it because it would all be trade companies. So that's interesting. I'm curious. I know that they changed it because it used to be minus like 2000% missionary strength. So it was like impossible and they made it like minus 20%. So if you have like really good conversion strength, maybe you can do it. I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, it's almost all Catholic down under. And the same would apply over in South America as well as North America with a little bit of Anglican up here in Newfoundland hanging out, but it uh, doesn't look like the Dutch are taking too kindly to that. English culture reigns supreme, actually pushing Scottish culture out of Scotland, so that's a thing. Andalusian culture, which I'm pretty sure comes from the Moors, has pushed back and uh, pushed the Moors out of more lands. It's all Andalusian over here in uh, the Maghreb. Of course, Muscovite reigns supreme in Northern Asia. And this finally settles the debate of the superior culture of South Africa. It's Egyptian. New World culture is primarily Portuguese with a bunch of natives, but you can't forget about the Mexicans up here in New England and parts of Canada. And like the three Castilian provinces over here as well. We have some Swedish provinces over here in uh, the Caribbean area. Some Frankian and Louisianan over here in Colombia and Venezuela. Turns out that down in Panama, they're eating that spicy Cajun, baby. <laughs> And as is tradition, we have Brazilian exclusively outside of Brazil with Platinian culture exclusively inside of Brazil. And of course, to no surprise, we have the Netherlands well out in front by over 800 development on Russia. But Russia doing incredibly well with Spain in the third spot, Ottomans in the fourth spot, which, like I said, impressive to see them not die. Austria in the fifth spot, Gujarat doing well in the sixth spot. Always love to see a little bit of Indian representation. The United States in the seventh spot and rounding out the eighth spot is Lan Na, a... Uh, Southeast Asian nation, <laughs> of course, a fully stacked economic hegemon for the beastly Netherlands controlling the English channel with them collecting almost 2,500 ducats every single month. It's easy to maintain economic hegemon when you're making that much money from trade alone. They are extremely well developed, but how about that man province 68 development over here in this Ayrshire or however that's pronounced. Hamster Dance finishes with 67 development, very respectable. And a bunch of random coal provinces also in the 60s, no surprise there. I always love to see this Auvergne province so highly dev because it's it's a it's a mountain province, but it's coal, so the AI will develop the crap out of it even though it's mostly manpower dev, but you know, dev is dev I guess when it comes to the AI. I hope that you enjoyed that video. I definitely had a good time making it. I always love these all monuments in one province sort of projects. They're fun. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video. Let me know that you appreciate it. If you haven't already, you can subscribe. There's a ton of content you're gonna miss out on if you're not already subscribed. Early access goes out to the homies and patron supporters. So consider supporting, click the join button. If you have a suggestion of something that you'd like to see, make sure you leave it in the comments below. And a huge shout out to the patrons and channel members who keep this channel going. If you want early access to these videos and exclusive Discord benefits, make sure you check out the link in the description or the join button below the video.